Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for an out-of-the-pack review of the Legio Custodes Telamon Dreadnought Iliastus Accelerator Culverin. Goodness me, what a mouthful. And this is a weapon option, as you can see, for the Telamon Heavy Dreadnought. This fella hiding in the background, part of the Talons of the Emperor list for Horus Heresy 7th edition at the moment. This is the third weapon option we've had for the Telamon. Previously we'd had the Fist or the Cestus, and then the Arachnus Storm Cannon, both of which you can see on my example in the background. But now we have another one, and this is the Iliastus Accelerator Culverin. This weapon is clearly a close relation of the Iliastus Accelerator Cannon from the Caladius Grav Tank, which was an early addition to the Custodian Army, but now we can stick one on the arm of this Dreadnought. What we're going to do in this review is we're going to open up the pack, we're going to have a look at the part, check the quality. Of course, this is only a single part and it, there's not a lot to it. I'm going to go away, quickly build it, and then I'll come back and do a model review with him and then talk about the rules. And we've had some rules for this published as well today. I think they might be a little bit controversial. So setting any potential cheese aside, let's get into the actual unboxing review. So it comes in a standard Forge World clamshell pack. As you can see, the cost of this is 13 United Kingdom pounds, or 13 pounds sterling. So that's the procrastination out of the way. Let's get into the pack. I have to admit, I prefer the look of this weapon in many ways to the Storm Cannon. I'm glad we've got both, to be quite honest. Right, so what do we get? Well, we get two sprues. We get the accelerator cannon itself, and then a sprue which has got the shoulder and two cooters on. So as far as kits go, this is pretty darn simple, and it's just a single side, so there's no instructions. I think they're working with the assumption if you bought the Dreadnought, you've got the instructions for that, and you know what you're doing. Right, so let's have a look at the accelerated cannon itself. So, as I said, I do like the style of this thing. It really is a very far future style looking gun. And I think essentially the accelerated cannon or the Iliastus accelerated cannon is a rail gun. And it has some rather funky in-game abilities. Talking of funkiness, this looks a pretty funky part. Right, what do we think? So, we'll start around the top. Da -da -da, that's all good. So we've got Evidence of a slip here, so a little bit of a seamed clean up there. Definite evidence of misalignment of the mould here. So we've got some more delicate clean up to do there. And that's why they need to take more care of the production to make sure when you've got very delicate fins like this that the moulds are absolutely perfectly aligned because anything is slightly off and you get that sort of nonsense. Anyway, that will fix up okay. But of course it's always better not to have it. Then there's a bit more of a continuation of that across the back of this, what I presume is a magazine for the accelerator cannon. A key, they've got some rear details. That looks fine. In terms of the actual part though, it's very clean. Hardly any release agent or anything on it at all. It's nice. Got a drilled out barrel to start with, so that's good. Hmm, nice. Then let's have a look at the cooters and the elbow block. So the cooter is a fairly simple fare. I mean, I've already got two of these from the original Dreadnought I bought, or from the original Arachnus Storm Cannon I bought. They look fine. It's about the elbow. So we've got a slip running across this there, so that's quite noticeable. So that'll need cleaning off. And then, unfortunately, that's continued all the way around. So, mm, yeah, a bit sloppy, that. And again, you know, you, you've got this thing with how they've designed this mould, and why cut the mould so it runs right across that detail? It would be much more sensible, wouldn't it, to try put down there, or maybe try get it central on the boss. Instead, they put the mould right across all the finest detail. You can see how it's affected on both sides. So, okay, casting quality, mm, six and a half, maybe seven out of 10. That could have been better. Seven out of 10, I'll say. And I'm knocking points off for that because it's a bit more work for me. I'm going to go away, put this together, and then I'll be back straight after this for the model build and tactics part of this review. Be back in a sec. And here we are back again with the completed Iliastus Accelerator Culverin attached to my Telamon. Put it together, pretty straightforward build. Very, very straightforward to build. The only thing that took time was cleaning up the mold slips. Okay, let's have a look at this weapon up close. Let's take it off the Dreadnought first. 
so you can actually get a feel for what it looks. Yeah, it's a good looking weapon. And I like the style on it. They've taken, I think, what you might say, the key design cues from the original accelerator cannons on the Cladius and shrunk it down. I mean, I did a little size comparison while I was in the shop and the accelerator cannons on the Cladius are something like this long. They're much longer. So this is a short barrel variant. It has this distinctive muzzle arrangement and uh, perhaps, well, whatever it does. And of course, the barrel is... So yeah, nice continuation in terms of the style of the weapon. And it's beautifully detailed. There's absolutely stacks of detail on this. Just like the original Storm Cannon, Will Hayes has done another splendid job with designing the weapons. And an interesting mixture of smooth, rounded, thin design styles. But then also we've got this big, chunky ammunition bin here as well. So that gives a bit of contrast to the rest of the weapon, which is good. The elbow arrangement is exactly the same as for the Cestus and the Arachnus Storm Cannon. I suppose the first thing to do is to compare this against its stable mate, the Arachnus Storm Cannon, and see how it looks, because the two are an interesting pair. So what do we see straight off? Well, the Culverin, the Iliastus Accelerator Cannon, is somewhat longer, and then its kind of bulk is more continuous along the weapon, though overall it's much thinner. It's a much thinner sort of setup overall, whereas the Storm Cannon has got this big bulky array of what we presume are these rotating laser chambers, discharge chambers, whatever they are. Both weapons have a similar sort of chunky ammo section, or, although on the Storm Cannon they are somewhat smoother in design as opposed to the big box magazine on the Iliastus Culverin. So what do I think looks-wise? Well, I like it. I really like the look of it. It's a nice bit of a contrast to the shorter, stubbier Arachnus. Though, ironically, this is a shorter range weapon in rules term than any of the Storm Cannon's firing mode. But we'll come back to that. Of course, that's because this is a shrunk down version of something that is much, much bigger. The standard accelerator cannon, we may say. I do like the look of it. And it's nice to have another weapon option for this um, most enormous of Dreadnoughts. Okay. Well, let's now mate it up to the actual Telemon. I love the look of it. I love how it goes with the rest of the Dreadnought. And I really like how it's worked out in terms of the pose I originally did. And this is one of those happy accidents. The original pose I did, and I designed it kind of like with this in mind. So the Telemon is striding forward with great vigor and it's firing it as it does so of its Cestus swung back. But I took a slightly different aesthetic line with the accelerator cannon and I imagined that the weapon was just slightly lowered as if ready to bring to a firing position. And it just kind of like, I, because it's a long weapon, when I did it like that, I thought it looked too angular, too sharp. But just putting that little bit of a downward dip on it, it kind of flows with the orientation of the arm and the shoulder. And it actually just made me think a little bit about the original LE2 Space Marine model, who's carrying his Space Age blaster with the barrel pointed down. It just made me think of that a bit. I really like how it looks and really pleased how it integrated with the look of the rest of the Telemann I already had. Of course, we can take the Cestus away and now Bob the Arachnus Storm Cannon on. So now we've got a maximum DACA Dreadnought and if we prefer, we can have leading with the Arachnus Blaze Cannon. And again, the length of the gun just nicely follows the line of the shoulder and the arm round, I think. So yeah, I was really pleased with that, really pleased how it looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it back to this configuration. I'm quite taken by this at the moment. I think it looks really good. So a great looking weapon and fits the look of the Custodians and the Telemon really well. Right, so now I'd like to talk about the model quality. Well, there's not really much to go wrong with this because it's three pieces. I've not put them on, but you get these two cooters that are designed so you put one on either side because I want my weapons to swap around. I'm not gonna put them on. I don't really think it needs it. That's personal choice. The fit of these two parts was fine. The only thing that was a little bit of a letdown was slightly sloppy production, just in terms of the alignment of the mold that has run around here. The mold was misaligned through here, so there was a, quite a lot of fiddly clean at work to do. And then also had a similar sort of thing with the elbow joint. And again, it was just a slight bit more care and attention in the production phase. Just make these so much nicer. And instead of taking over an hour of work, knife work to clean all this up, 
I'd have put this together in about 10 minutes. So it just makes the whole experience nicer, not having to deal with these mold slips. Also, you know, it gives you more time to do other things you want to do in the hobby. So that'd be my watch out, particularly just keep an eye out for the alignment on the whole accelerator cannon around it, because that's clearly how the mold goes together. Pick the right orientation to do it through, because you wouldn't want the mold line running across all this, because there's absolutely loads of detail. At least this is, there's less to go slippy here. In terms of fit and integration with the rest of the kit, all good stuff. Now let us talk about the rules. And we got an updated set of the Heavy Dreadnought rules on the Forge World website today. This takes a previous set of rules that have been provided and just updates them with the stats for the Iliastus Accelerator Culverin. Had a look through this, I don't think there's any changes to the rules as it was previously, with the exception of the addition of this new weapon. And let's talk about the Iliastus Accelerator Culverin. You can replace either of these Cestus with an accelerator culver in for 25 points. So in that configuration there, that will cost 325 points. You could have none, one or two of the culver ins, and then you can mix and match with Cestus and Storm Cannons to taste. Now, let's look at the profile and, well, this is um, interesting. So here we have the rules, Iliastus accelerator culver in. Range is 36, strength is seven, AP two, type is heavy five, rending, and heliothermic detonation. So these are the same stats as we had for the Iliastus Accelerator Cannon on the Cladius Grav Tank. So no change there, apart from the range is shorter at 36 as opposed to 60. Of course, here, as this is Horus Heresy, we are talking about seventh edition Warhammer 40,000. And then it also retains the heliothermic detonation rule. If any target has an unsaved wound from a hit, they have to take an immediate toughness test. If they fail, they get instant death. You add plus one to results on the vehicle damage table. So instead of adding plus one for AP two, you're adding plus two in effect. So it's like an AP one weapon on penetrating hits. Very potent. The only thing it lacks besides the range compared to the standard Iliastus accelerator cannon is twin linking. This is just a straight shot. However, heavy five is better than twin linked three. So what do I think? The addition of the Iliastus accelerator culverin for many people will put the question into their minds if it didn't already exist. Why do you need to bother with a Caladius Graph Tank? Okay, it's a bit cheaper points wise, but for the Telemon, you just get so much more. You get absolutely monstrous close combat capabilities and you get more raw firepower, better protected, more hull points, everything. It costs more, yes. I would say it's clearly worth it. A heavy five Iliastus Accelerator Coolrin. I mean, it's absolutely devastating firepower. I mean, it doesn't matter really what you're up against, it's going to be taking names. It's particularly good against vehicles and absolutely superb against Mechanicum monstrous creatures. And Thanatars better watch out for this thing because this thing is going to be uh, causing them a lot of kills. I think it's a great gun. And yes, it's only 36 inches, but we say only if you compare it to its stable mate, the Leviathan Dreadnoughts, Leviathan Storm Cannon, well that's only 24 inches range. 36 inches range isn't bad for most battlefield users. You know, you've got to be playing 8 by 6 apocalypse style sized games to really get the most out of longer range weapons most of the time. So 36 isn't too bad, I don't think, particularly for so much firepower. As to whether or not you take that or this, well, this is better for mulching infantry and heavy infantry. So it's great for killing powered armor and marines. And then it also doubles up as a great anti-tank gun with its concentrator blast. Whereas the accelerator culverin moves more towards dealing with heavier targets. Although its weight of fire at five shots means it's never going to be a slouch when shooting against infantry. Brilliant terminator remover with AP2. What's not to like? And on that point, when I originally shared my thoughts and did a rules review on the Telemon Heavy Dreadnought, I said it, I thought it was maybe about 30 points under costed. I think this weapon is yet another demonstration of how under costed this unit is. If you give it one of these and one of those, then you've got one of the most beastly anti-tank units in the game. It's absolutely murderous. Well, heavy infantry or anti-tank, you just absolutely mulch them. And that's before you even consider the Spiculus Bolt launchers. I don't know, I can't help but think the base Dreadnought should be another maybe 20 points. 
and each of these weapon options should be another 10. Something like that. I think it's um, under-costed. Okay, that does put it into the same sort of territory as a Night Titan, but, you know, it can do things that Night Titans can't, and it's certainly much more durable overall, on account of its multi-layered refractor field. I think that debate will go on and on. Aside from that, the actual weapon looks great. Yeah, I love it. We'll just finish with a little shot of the Telemon with its brand new toy. As always, I'll be interested to hear what you think about what I've talked about in this video, especially if you have Colladius Grav Tanks. How do you think the introduction of this weapon has changed the force balance and dynamic for the Talons of the Emperor? But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.